TV. I'm with Faisal Mohammed. How are you doing, sir? I'm good, man. How are you? Yeah, not too bad, Faisal. Yeah. Yeah. Looking kind of sharp in that. Thank in you, that Faisal. You like him, the yeah, jacket? It's nice, it's what, nice. what do you like about it? The colour, man. You kind of stand out. Stand out a bit, isn't yeah, exactly. it? Exactly. It's all Can yourself, you look. Very smart as well. Yeah, yeah, tried. Right. Seriously, I'm you've, you've made a lot of effort. I've seen some of your other interviews. So Thank I thought, you. You know, I've got to keep up with you. Look at all slick. <laughs> <laughs> Tarzan, July, when's it coming out? July summer? the 1st. July the 1st? Yeah, and I play a character in it called The Huge Warrior. Look out for this, ladies, yeah? Exactly. I don't think you'll be able to miss it. I'm the huge warrior. <laughs> I thought you'd be Tarzan himself. Yeah, I thought I was going to be Tarzan, but Which is disappointing. Yeah, 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 just a little bit. Yeah, I understand. Yeah. All right. <laughs> Let's talk about your career, yeah. which was a long time ago. Yeah. Um, can you talk to us a bit about it and elaborate what actually happened to Faisal Mohammed and it, why didn't you fulfill and go on and continue and progress to fighting for a title? Okay, well I had seven professional fights, well five amateur fights to begin with at All Stars Boxing Gym okay. and I turned professional, had seven professional fights, um, one or seven, signed to Chris Saniga mm -hmm. when, I, um, when I started boxing professionally and was promoted by Frank Warren okay. and from there I left Frank Warren and went to Panic's promotion mm -hmm. um, with Panos and mm -hmm. um, fantastic promoter um, I had uh, Jimmy Tibbs as my trainer fantastic trainer you know like got me so sharp mentally physically just just ready to to do what I had to do and um, you know we were I was fighting winning all my fights you know stopping um, all my opponents and then I went for my eighth fight and um, they told me I had a murmur in my heart so I was like okay well <laughs> what's going on there uh, you got high blood pressure hypertension so uh, Robert Smith from the British Boxing Board took away my license and said I wasn't you know allowed to box because I could end up with brain hemorrhage which obviously is not you know the direction you want to be going in um, so what happened was um, I wasn't able to fight so I was trying to get my blood pressure down for like two years so I could go back you know, to boxing. And um, so I stopped training and blood pressure went down. So I was excited, went back to training and blood pressure went back up. And um, when I first found out I had it, what they said was um, it was hereditary because my mum and dad have it. But obviously that was a bit, you know, I don't really want to accept that straight away. You've got to take them back by it, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah, you've got to try different things. You know, I tried everything from Reiki, you know, where it's like, oh, you're too stressed out. Uh, I don't really get stressed out. So I was like, okay, well, I'll try it anyway. I don't smoke. All the different things that could lead to having high blood pressure, I didn't actually do. So, um, you know, I tried loads of different things. It wasn't really working, so I was like, okay, you know what? I'm just got to call it a day and keep it moving. Really? And um, I went into personal training. Well, when you finished boxing, yeah. how was you actually feeling at that time? Um, I feel, think when, when you sat at home, yeah, and the phone stopped ringing, yeah, and people didn't call you as much, yeah, and the money wasn't coming in, yeah, people weren't around who were around before, yeah. Can you elaborate and actually tell me what, how you felt? Yeah, I think it was the words to describe <laughs> that would actually be. It was, it was actually the dark, darkest hour, you know, where obviously it's a dream that, you know, you know you can achieve. What? And, um, you know, you're putting everything into it. You're doing everything that you're supposed to be doing. Right, yeah. And um, all of a sudden everything stops and it all goes quiet. And you're thinking, huh? Hold on, what, what, happened? <laughs> what happened there? So, you know, you kind of had to work it out mentally you know it became like a fight mentally with you know within yourself which you know you just have to keep it positive really and win the fight within yourself just so you can keep it moving and not you know was you tempted to go abroad um no 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 not not to fight no i was over here and i was like you know about trying to work it out you're trying to you know yeah trying to work it out over here and um it just um yeah so at that point mm. Where was the money coming from? Was um, it just the point of... Because I mean, you put quite a few, you put, How many years did you put into boxing? Um, I started boxing when I was... I must have put at least six years into it. But I had been boxing before that. As, you know, when I was kickboxing. Obviously, I used to kickbox before that. I was kickboxing world champion when I was 21. And then a few years later, um, I turned to amateur boxing at All Stars where I was already training when I was um, a martial artist. Mm -hmm. And then um, 
and and just you know got into it from there and um, you know mm. just knocking them one out basically okay yeah. and going to personal training so where did you yeah. get the passion to want to train other people after being trained for so many years by others I think it was the whole thing of you know training people but it was more an internal thing you know mental and an emotional thing not just a physical thing with the training because it was about really you know building people up that's what I'm all about I've always been about that even you know in school did you ever thought about taking a pro license out no 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 I didn't really want to get into boxing like that you know my, my dream was not to be a trainer as such it wasn't really you know a dream for me you know, um, so yeah. Uh, the way you train Craig David. Yeah, yeah, I trained um, Craig David um, um, for a few years, and you know, he, he was very um, like, you know, like trains like a professional athlete, basically. Obviously, the the way his mind is and how he works is is is, is that. So obviously, when he applies himself, um, and for me, that was just perfect. So I was um, doing a bodyguarding and training Craig at the same time. So. It was quite interesting. Okay. Yeah, so you know, flew around the world, you know. With Craig. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Training him. He training like every single day. Like just on it. Training even harder than some of the professional fighters I know. You know, so that he's still famous at that time, or was he? Yeah, 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 yeah. He was yeah, yeah, yeah. He's, he's always been famous. <laughs> like, yeah, let's not let's not get that twisted even now. He's not my favorite. He's back. Yeah, but come on, you gotta give him props, man. Craig's yeah, got course, skills. Of course. You know, he was the best to ever do it over here. So even over there as well, the Americans. So you know, no, no, you gotta no, give no. it to the guy. Okay. Yeah. Um. So from that point on, yeah. Who did you fancy when you're sitting at home watching TV? On a regular basis. Um. For me. The most interesting yeah. fight for me at the moment um, is um, George Groves. Okay, George. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I find I find it very interesting watching George Groves. And regardless of you know the losses that he's had, yeah. I think he's got more potential to be honest with you than a lot of the fighters out there at the moment. He's more he's very exciting to watch and he's just sharp and just on his game, man. You know, he's got that old school thing about him. You know, whereas nowadays it's you know everyone wants people yeah look at me look at me for show and mm. it's like okay well what are you really doing well, he's, he's still in con contention to fight for a title yeah he's had, he's had three chances yeah doesn't stop him from getting a fourth chance no 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 he's had a win no. recently yeah and now he's gone you know he's changed trainers and he's gone back to doing what he was doing before you know very he's still a draw as well do you yeah. know he puts bums on the seat ah most definitely yeah. man you know he's interesting. yeah yeah he's definitely got that old school thing there oh, right? and obviously you've got Anthony Joshua at the moment as well doing his thing Anthony. knocking everyone out and uh, what can you say I'm sure you told me that you think it'd beat David Hay soon I wouldn't, time uh, I, wouldn't, uh, I wouldn't say you know he's not fight right now right now but to be honest with you when it comes to I think that would be a fantastic yeah. fight yeah. and I think that fight should happen at some stage yeah. You know, if they try and brush David to the side, you know, it's not really. Um, I think it will be a good, good fight for. What's the bigger fight, Joshua Fury, Joshua Hay? From a commercial point of view. Uh, uh, definitely Fury and Joshua, most definitely. Okay. But obviously, you know, David is a is a mm. is a risky risky move mm. for for any of them to fight because mm. he hits super hard. He's fighting Prince Charles for the IBF in April. Okay. Yeah, you know, like, yeah, yeah, yeah I think, yeah, you know, David's still like, for no, no, Andrew Joshua's fighting Prince Charles. Yeah, um, which is probably the weaker yeah, champion. I think, yeah, I think yeah. Yeah, Joshua will, uh, you know, fight for he, wouldn't be, he wouldn't be fighting him if they didn't think he could, he could beat him. Mm. And to be honest with you, the power that he's got, mm. it's not it takes one punch from Joshua. <laughs> it's all, all, all what about when he takes a shot? Can, do you think he could take a, a serious well, he's heavy blow? Yeah, he's proved that he did, he could take a shot because he was shook when... Um, he wobbled so though, he, he, he got wobbled. Yeah, but Tyson wobbled when Bruno hit him, but he didn't finish him off, did he? Tyson still finished him off. I didn't know you're only human being, so if you get caught with a shot, yeah. you know, like even Chris Eubank, with the, you know, one of the hardest duels in boxing, mm. put to the floor, Calzaghi, Steve Collins. You know, but um, Oliver McCall, like probably the toughest to be in boxing. He's made of granite steel. <laughs> yeah. He's from another planet, yeah, like no, Krypton. No. Yeah, I don't know what, what that guy gets that chin from. But, you know, um, at the end of the day, yeah, like, it's all part of it. It's, 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 you know, it's a, it's a boxing match. You will get shook, but the thing is, can you ride it and come out on the other side? Which mm. he's shown that he can. Obviously, the fighters, fighters will get harder. The punches will get harder. Mm. And um, 
you know, it's, you just got to be ready for it. Mm. You know, and um, I think it will be. Come from an MMA past mm. and a boxing past. Yeah, yeah. What's your take on MMA? Yeah, I, you know, I've, I like MMA. I you think you've done Thai boxing. Kick yeah, I've done Thai boxing, karate, um, traditional karate, shot of can. And um, what's your overall take on it? Yeah, I like it. I think the athletes. Are, when you speak to a lot of boxers, yeah, they tend to don't really engage in talking about MMA too yeah. much. They yeah. don't actually class it as being existent. Yes, yes, so absolutely. But you know, that's like yeah. doing martial arts for me yeah. when I was doing karate, and you know, you got people who do kung fu. Mm. Everyone kind of holds it to their chest like it's theirs. You know, yeah, karate is not nice, no? It belongs to everyone. It's free flowing for everyone. It belongs to everyone. So at the end of the day, you know, just because you're a boxer, that doesn't mean boxing belongs to you. You know, so at the end of the day, it's, you know, they're athletes. They're trying to, you know, earn money and follow a dream. So at the end of the day, if they're doing it and it's working, and I think it's fantastic because for a martial artists, especially from back in the day where they would put so much into it and not really get anything back it was more a personal journey mm. back then whereas now do you know what they turn them into superstars so you know they're doing their thing and they're entertaining